this is Martin Speaks. Um, I wanted to come to you guys again in like a little short rant, like I did with the last video um, about social injustice and the cancel cancel culture. I wanted to speak on basically social media within a whole. Um, kind of correlates with the last rant, but not really. Um, and I, and it, once again, I try to uh, have this relate to a relationship base, sort of. And um, I would say with social media, that you know, it's a good, it's a good platform if you do have. A social media page but I do feel as though that social media in a way is is being misused and what I mean by that is yes social media has became a voice of the voiceless it has connected billions of people worldwide it has in a sense uh, like I said in the last video, it has became a um, a way for people to come together in a way that people has never have never came together before, and you can form you know think tanks and stuff about how you feel about things around the world and what's going on and stuff like that, but. What I'm not understanding is <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> uh, in like the 80s and 90s, uh, people used to people used to you know if they could if they could afford them, they would have cell phones. Cell phones primarily were for people who owned a business. It was a way to stay connected to the business. If something was going on within the business you know you would get a call from you know another person that was underneath of you if you owned the company or let's say you was just on you know in the company and they need to get a hold of you that was a quick way of them get, getting a hold of you so you could come back to the office figure some stuff out fix some things and then you you were back on your way um now I would say with social media it has became a, basically a shit show anything and everything's posted nothing is uh, nothing is really researched in a way where it, things can make sense um some things aren't thoroughly checked before people react and it's basically became a reactionary type of culture now see something we react not saying that that's a bad thing but you you, you gotta do your research on stuff before you do things because then you could primarily form some type of detriment to whatever your cause is and what do I mean by that let's say you have a okay let's take let's take uh, black lives matter black lives matter formed because of all the injustice that has happened to black lives and you know it was a group of women that basically got sick and tired of black men and women being treated any type of way that the police forces of America seen fit and they wanted to take action so they took action the action was we're gonna protest to show these police departments of America that we're not having it because it's been too many Emmett Till's, too many Rodney King's, too many uh, Central Park Fives, too many uh, Eric Gardner's, too many um, uh, Philando Castile's, it's been too many Mike Brown's, it's been too many, uh, it's another name I can throw out there. Um, 
Tupac's biggies. It's, it's been it's been too many that's been being allowed by the the forces of this world and the people of this world that saw fit with these lives that are basically precious and if you look at if you look at it in the sense of a life a life is precious you get one you're only one person you get one life from birth to death and your life shouldn't be cut short because of somebody who can't control their own emotions so um so we're in a reactionary culture now when we see something we react and like I said, not saying that that's not all bad, but it sometimes isn't all good. Now I understand people's uh, stance on why they're reacting. I understand it. I'm not saying that it's wrong, and I'm not saying that when these people react that they're not right when they do it. But what we have to understand is by reacting a certain way that produces certain protocols to where these cops have to operate by so we saw in st louis that when mike brown got killed streets got basically uh filled with people they sent the the national guard out and they started basically wreaking terror on the people who lived in these envir in, in 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 this city or in that city. So, um, by putting a call out from social media, which was a good thing, this is what happened. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna protest like this. But then you have your agent provocateurs that wants to basically fuck the movement up and basically have it in in their hands to where this is how you're, you guys are going to operate this protest so we can stop it. So agent provocateurs came in, it became a shit show, people were arrested, people got some people may have got killed, but I have to do my research on that. So, allegedly, people got killed. So, what we have to do as as a whole, as an American people, let's start doing our due diligence on things before we react. Because, as I said, when we re react a certain way, the cops have to. Uh, react a certain way in the in the binds of them being in law and order so they have to operate within a certain way but it has to be put forth to where it, some things would be lawful so we saw when we um when we saw the the murder of eric gardner that he was choked to death which in the state of new york the rear naked choke was outlawed by the state and it was in in that sense it was unlawful for that police officer to do that particular act on Eric Gardner so he like like the, the other police officer in St. Louis that killed Mike Brown he basically got paid time off so an investigation can can come and then you know he still had his job he's still out there in the streets of, of new york city harassing more people because he was only slapped on his wrist and not fired and thrown in jail so um my point of this is is that social media sort of in a way has became a detriment to us but also a tool and a gift and i will say that not only with just social um so social media i would say that social media within a whole it's became a gift and a curse but if you look at it also when it comes to relationships you know nine times out of ten relationships end because of what's been 
posted on social media or their spouse's social media or something like that. Like, it's always something within a breakup that has to do with social media. Take myself uh, in consideration. I was with someone. We were broken up, but we were still remained as friends. I posted something on social media that person didn't want to be my friend anymore because of her being in her feelings and feeling what she was feeling at the time which is understandable but look let's look at it like this if she not had looked at my social media as closely as she did we would still be friends to this day but if we look at it within the whole my I didn't I don't I don't take well with my old social media account that was my personal account i didn't i don't take social media seriously because it's it's, vir it's virtual reality to me people plug in like the matrix to get into the dream world they do what they do they unplug and then they have to go back to plug in again to see what else is going on which as i said it's, it's a gift and a curse because within a sense of it being a gift you're allowing yourself to do things and connect with people within a way that's never been done before but in a way it's also hurting us in, on a personal level because we're not using it within the way that it was supposed to be used. Number one, Facebook was meant to connect friends. It was a place for friends or people to connect or whatever, or reconnect. Same as MySpace when it, when it was up and running. It was a place for friends to connect to, you know, or connect with somebody you've never connected before or reconnect with somebody that you haven't uh, spoken to in a while it, it's it's a tool to help you not a tool to detriment like i've i've seen some studies um on teen uh like teen uh self-esteem uh graphs and uh teen deaths and all that like uh, like mostly the men number the the boy numbers from I think I think the numbers for like young children was eight to twelve and then like the mid teens was from like thirteen to sixteen or thirteen to fourteen and then the other numbers were like uh for like the older teens was from like fourteen or if not fifteen to eighteen and the boy graphs when it went to self-esteem and the and deaths and uh um can't think of the other graphs but it was like three graphs and it showed like on that graph like where the where men were at like where the boys were at and where the girls were at the girls were significantly significantly higher than the the boys by like i say like one out of like or like I say the guys probably ranked around like in like the lower thousands like or maybe hundreds like 200 or something like that but girls ranked a little higher in like the higher thousands because as I said in most videos females are emotional creatures in a sense of how their mind works so social media for females are, are, is more um is more worse than it is for guys because guys we don't we don't really care about certain things but when it comes to women what they see is how is also what how they will feel within their self so like the graph with the self-esteem like the self-esteem one for the females were was very high like of how they felt about themselves about them seeing other um other um you know females or people that they were friends with because you know with the 
millennials, the, the younger millen millennials and uh, I think it's Generation Z, is they, I think they call the other generation after the millennials. Um, they they rank the, the those females rank higher within like personal harm, deaths, and self esteem. Like they rank higher because they determine and perceive that what they're seeing on social media is basically the truth. But as guys, we really don't pay most attention because you know it's it's more of a like a bonding sort of thing. Like got like. I always heard this uh, growing up, like from older people. So please don't come at my neck from by me saying this. I heard an uncle of mine say, "I still can't, <clears throat> I still can't see how boys and girls are still going to school together." Because when I was in school, we men did shop and and uh we had shop class and we learned how to build things and we learned you know stuff like that and and the women learn uh home ec and they learn how to sew and and cook and balance a checkbook and shit like that like i can't see how we're you know girls and boys are still going to school together okay i understand his perception on what what he feels though proper schooling is between men and women and i don't fault him for it i will say in this day and age it would be wrong for him to think like that because basically i would people would say that he doesn't feel as though that women are equal to men but i understand his thought process behind it Boys learn better when they're active. So when you when you have a, a boy in sports when he's younger, growing up, he's learning a lot about himself and about like camaraderie and stuff like that. Like he's learning a lot from that. You could have a, a son or a nephew or a kid that you know that that's a boy. He could be the worst student in school, but he could be the best athlete because he's learning more from standing up, learning certain things than what he is being at school, sitting down. It's just something that I've seen myself. I feel as though that I work better standing up than what I do sitting down. I saw that when I worked at a warehouse job and then I worked at a manufacturing job where I was standing up all day. I saw that I got more work done standing up than what I did with a previous job when I was sitting down. Like, I, for some reason, I was more productive. I don't know if it's just the male makeup or if that's just how I perceive things, but that's just what I've, I've seen within myself. And then I also... So I also did my own study from my own research from how I saw myself from how I saw female co-workers they got a lot done sitting down from what I saw standing up I would say that you know they I'm not saying they weren't as productive as I was and, and some of my other male colleagues but I did see in a way that the, my male colleagues and myself worked better standing up, and I saw that within myself. Work, work better standing, standing up. So how does this all tie in, Marcus? This all ties in because of the social constructs of which is placed before us within these apps that we call social media, and it's giving us a perception of reality of what isn't true and determine it being true and then whatever like trump speaks about fake news and fake news is i've saw plenty of fake news stories on social media not taking the side of trump but it's just from what i saw i saw more stuff that was fake that I had to research on my own to see that it wasn't true to determine okay well somebody pulled the okie doke so I'll, I'll, end, I'll end that here um 
This is Marcus Speaks. Please lo like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a family member so they can also tell a fa family member. So we can keep this conversation going and, you know, just get yourself familiar with my page or whatever. So I'll end it here. Uh, I am Marcus, as I said, and this is Marcus Speaks. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next one.